And it's also inconsistent where sometimes you'll have people like, oh, I like them. They're a working class person you can get a beer with. But then if it's AOC, it's like, no, nah, she's a bartender. I don't trust her. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I thought you wanted the working class person that was yeah. low. And welcome to Mind Under Matter. I'm Shane Moss. This is Ramin Nazer. I hey. wanted to start off a uh, uh, just by saying this is episode 26 now. And I just went through L.A. and did a couple podcasts like Pete Holmes. You made it weird. We might have some new listeners or maybe once in a while we have an episode that like grabs people's attention with artwork or whatever from Ramin's followers on Instagram. And someone's like, hey, I'll try out this podcast, see what it's all about. I one want to say we take some te some sciencey tests once in a while if figure out our personality or whether, whether we have ADHD or whatever. We're doing a political one today. And uh, I just want to say that, like, I don't want someone, I don't want this to be someone's first podcast and think, <laughs> oh, these guys just talk about politics for an entire episode because we don't at all. It's not like we shy away from it, but it's like, it's just not a huge interest of either of ours of like the news of the day as much. I don't think. No. Um. And 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 most most importantly, and uh, whatever. Uh, I uh, that is what it is. But most importantly, just want to encourage. Just a periodic reminder that if you're new and you're like, oh, I like these guys. Uh, consider going back to episode zero and listening from the beginning, because not only do you get to hear the origin story, but that we kind of we kind of build on a lot of ideas. Each episode should kind of stand on its own so you can share it with people or whatever or have your favorite episode to listen back to. But um, if you do listen from the beginning, hopefully there will be just a, a little extra bonus like uh, ideas building on top of each other and and. Uh, able to follow along just a little bit more so that's all i just wanted yeah, to it's, say that it's like star trek so it's episodic but it's also serial so each episode does stand on its own but if a character dies earlier then the <laughs> character is dead which is why there's only two of us now not three where did the third person go find You'll out have to and... go back to the beginning mm -hmm. i still miss them yeah, I do a little bit, at least publicly, which is I mean, what this better. episode is about. How public can we be about our views? I don't know if you've seen, uh, what's his name, Jace Avery. He's a cartoonist and comic also, and uh, he has a comic where he holds out a puppet and it says, my my liberal beliefs, and then behind his back, it's like my, my secret conservative beliefs. And, yeah. Uh, before we take this, I was just thinking that it's... It's interesting that all your beliefs should come out to be liberal if you have a heart, but it it factors in like, do you think those policies will actually work though? Because like right. obviously, of course, like yeah, I want free healthcare for everyone, open borders for everyone, everything for everyone, tolerance for everyone, give everyone everything. But okay, now implement it. It's like oh shit, I have to actually implement it. Mm, I'd rather just have the opinion. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see, though. I'm interested in seeing where we actually land on these. Uh, yeah, and al also, I mean, I so it's my my. I don't really have like a issue with talking politics. I my issue is more um, current events, news. Yeah, event. current like, events like, suck balls. I just I don't I don't care about news like. I find global pandemics fascinating <laughs> or I find I find like massive scale, you know, things that last over decades or whatever or, or trends fascinating. But but like the little bit of clickbait of the day or like what's trending on Twitter is it's it's the same as like celebrity gossip as far as I'm concerned. Like, OK, this yeah. this this couple is getting married or this person cheated on this per like i just don't really care that much and i i think that's i think it's just like uh 
I think for a lot of people, it's just kind of water cooler talk in a way. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure to be just on top of what's going on now, not because what's happening now is more significant than what was happening a month ago. It's just like in the same way that, um, you know, you're watching Arrested Development now. Uh, years too late. Now you don't have as many people to talk about it with. Like there, <laughs> it's the same way that there's pressure to binge watch the new popular show as soon as it comes out on Netflix. That's that's what that's what the twenty four seven news cycle feels like to me. It's like it's less about informing yourself and more about keeping up with like the water cooler talk. Yeah, we want to feel connected at that water cooler, but yeah, it expires faster than bananas. So, so what I do enjoy about this and, and one, I don't really care. One, I think it's great if, if listeners know my biases, which I have, and then you can account for those and make your own decisions. But two, this is like, this is more of a global, uh, philosophical kind of, you know, bigger ideas, statements. These are, these are evergreen kind of statement. None of these questions are going to be about, um, like Obama specifically or Kim Kardashian or, or, or anything like that. They're, they're just more broad questions about our, uh, kind of po- half political, half philosophical ideas and, uh, on, life generally so in other words it's just right so if you're imagining yeah. like oh this episode's gonna stink uh uh uh, it's the opposite it's yeah. just right it's gonna, it's gonna, gonna smell be terrific mm-hmm. you, you're gonna want to take a you're gonna you're gonna reluctantly be like i'll sniff that episode <laughs> like that. we this all do pro. it don't we <laughs> we sniff our own episodes you think you don't want to but you like to put it up close to your nose, maybe rub it on your ass a little bit. We all have asses. Why do they call it asses? Isn't it just one ass? I've got two cheeks, but it's one ass. What happens if you lose a cheek? <laughs> what happens if you lose a cheek? No offense to our one ass cheeked listeners out there. We we oh, equally I'm love so our double sorry. ass cheek yeah, listeners, yeah. our single ass no. cheek listeners, and our triple ass cheek listeners. But if yeah. you've got four ass cheeks, you can suck all four of those. Oh, yeah, Fuck off. Get, get out of here. I don't yeah. I don't need that in my life. First off, you don't you have enough going right for you when you have double ass? Like yeah. that's it, 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 you don't also get my my praise and envy. A little bit of envy. Um, so I, so what I did was I wrote a past guest of mine who, um, who studies, uh, he's a political scientist and personality researcher. His name is Kevin B. Smith, actually not, not the, uh, not the Kevin Smith of clerks. Yeah. He doesn't wear a hockey Jersey. He wears a basketball Jersey. Uh, Yeah. Which did you, were you a fan of the, I, I was, yeah, I was. A yeah, huge I loved Clerks fan. and Mall Rats and uh, yeah. all that stuff. What's it? Um, Dogma. They're all fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Clerks and Mall Rats especially were just perfect. Eight. I think I was like fifth. I think no, I think I was like fourteen or something at the time. And it was also just like just starting to get into, you know, entry level job sort of things too so it was relatable and i spent time at the malls around that time yeah when malls were still a thing mall rats is going to confuse future people so so much. what is this building it's like walking <laughs> in a virtual amazon <laughs> man that'll be cool if it comes full circle and we're back to malls again but it's in the virtual space because that's yeah. the only thing that sucks about um Amazon, other than that the employees have to drink their own piss out of jars, which we discussed on several which, episodes. Which our employees do too. And yeah. I mean, I just I just think it's like I I think that when you're like our employees, when they drink their own piss, that's like they're sacrificing something for like a grassroots sort of campaign. Amazon. It's like at this point, come on. Yeah. Spring spring for water. Yeah, let them drink spring their own for water. Spring water. Yeah. Their own water. Like they pee and then it filters into just water and then they drink that. But it would be so cool to browse like hallways of stuff because it's mm. interesting how 
like unlimited potential and freedom often yields nothing because it's like you can search for anything you want in the search bar what do you want to search for like uh uh i don't i don't know can i browse nope you got to just enter something and then it's probably going to be less of a journey than if you were to like have uh bouncing off points between different products and ideas there are in, in uh in in the region that i'm in there's a there's a um store called shields i i don't know if it's like it's sort of like a REI or a, or um, what what's an example of a different sports store? Dicks. That's, uh, Dicks. Yes, it's sporting it's like, goods. It's like Dicks, but like Pussies bigger and better. Goods. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that joke's been made a billion times. It's not even a joke. It's just. It was it's a funny joke. That, we'll count it. Yeah, it's just it's funny a, that Dick is like Richard, and it's funny that it's, it's yeah, normal. It's, a, it's funny that it's normal. <laughs> or at least it wasn't the don't 50s. Go Richard's Sporting Goods. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But it's like it is. It is nice. You know, I, I went to get a another pickleball paddle and like a couple other things, and that's just such a better experience than guessing on Amazon. Like, well, I hope this paddle feels right in my hand or these shorts actually look like that or. Oh yeah. Clothes right is a nightmare. Whatever. Yeah. Um, Not that I give a fuck about clothes. I mean, how many episodes have I worn the same dirty shirt? Like 18? Yeah. 19? I just pick Probably. Up, I pick up like artsy shirts at whenever I'm at a, some sort of artsy festival or something like that or uh or like a cool a cool trendy shop in a city that i'm visiting i try to find a new artsy shirt to remind me of the area um but um oh and dogma dogma was such a fantastic speaking of george carlin oh yeah uh, he plays the preacher in that yeah yeah and alanis morissette is god chris rock is uh I forget what Chris Rock is in it, but he's in it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that was a fun choice with Alanis Morissette. Yeah. Um, Oh, and with uh, with Mallrats, before I had even heard of it, I think it was my first Kevin Smith movie. My friend just came over to my house one day without calling. He just did the no call, just show up, the pop in, as it's referred to as Seinfeld. And he had just gotten his wisdom teeth out and... The effects of the pain medication made him like humorless, but not in an angry way. But he just showed up and he goes, hey, I just got my wisdom teeth out and it doesn't stop you from feeling pain. It just stops you from caring about it. You want to watch <laughs> Mall Rats? And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, sure. And then we went upstairs and we watched uh, Mall Rats and uh, he didn't laugh at any of it, but he was having a good time, but he was just stone faced the whole time. And I'm just howling and looking <laughs> over at him and nothing. And to this day, he doesn't remember that uh, night at all. He just blacked <laughs> out of <laughs> showing me Mall Rats. That's such a funny thing to black out and do show up yeah. at someone's house. He's a doctor them now. A- Give him a kind of a sciencey explanation <laughs> of why you're a zombie that <laughs> can't express any emotion. Yeah, and he's, then a, watch. he's an actual doctor now. Oh, that's awesome. I have a friend who's a doctor who used to, we used to call him Fireball Paul because he <laughs> he used to like taking Everclear, which is 195 proof alcohol. So it's just rubbing alcohol. I don't even know what the 5% other stuff is or why they bothered with it. Um, maybe because it's not legal to be like 200 proof. I don't know. Mm. But, um, but he would, he would take it and blow it in, in a fire, you know, like the, um, carnies or whatever. And can you say carny? I don't want to. I think that group is not sensitive about what okay. you call them. I think they embrace freak. Um, Cause I like show carnies. side show. I don't yeah. want to get on the carnies bad side. I want to be in with the carnies. Um, yeah. But uh, so anyway, he'd blow it into the fire. And then one day he was doing this. And I think he was around more people than normal. Um, and so he was like excited to be getting more attention and was really pushing the envelope. And he was getting way drunker than he realized because um it it still like seeps in through your 
cheeks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so he's getting like pretty sloppy. And there's a little left in the Everclear bottle. And he's like, one more. And then he like does way too much. It splashes like all over his face. Oh, no. And then he just goes, and and the flame chases the stream back up. It lights his face on fire. He doesn't know that his face is on fire, and all these people jump up and start slapping him in the face. He used to get beat up a lot when we were in middle school, but he's like a really tough guy. But like popular kids would like want to like try to like tackle him and stuff. Um, and and so he also has like. PTSD at this point from like <laughs> being chased around the playground in middle school. So all these people just start slapping him in the face and he just starts clocking everybody left and right with his face on fire. <laughs> and now he's an eye surgeon. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we used to blow up mailboxes together too. It's, uh, I, I, I just want to tell like one that. of his patients that like all of the insane things that he used to do. Cause I was, I was the crazy one in my friend group and Paul was the only one that was like, okay, Shane's the crazy one, but Paul's insane. Just like <laughs> actually it's like he did crazier stuff than me and was the only one. One time he was uh, walking on this Hastings, Minnesota bridge and with another friend of mine. Uh, and it's over this river. It's a very high bridge. I should look up how high it is. And it's, uh, it's like, they just, it was bar time. They just got done. They just got done drinking, um, uh, all night at a bar. Roseanne and bar. One, one of my buddy, uh, my, my buddy, Travis says to Paul, he goes, man, when it, It'd be so fun to jump off this bridge, wouldn't it? And Paul just like without a moment's hesitation, he's just like, "No, it will be fun <laughs> <laughs> when I jump off of it." And he, Paul loved jumping off things. We always—he was the only person that I knew that liked heights more than I did too. And then he just very drunk just jumped off of a bridge like without really looking and landed in the water and i guess it was like on the way down i guess he like had lots of time it was such a long (laughs) drop that he had lots of time to think about what he had done and and the someone saw him do it called the police and the police showed up and then they're like they thought it was a suicide and then Paul gets out of the water and swims to shore and stuff. The police are there and asking him. And so then, then they're like, oh, breaker, breaker, just for fun. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> and, and then they were going to charge Paul. Uh, uh, then I think fun one of the in cops. Public. Yeah, one of the cops was like, because at first they're like, what the hell were you doing? And then. One of the cops is like, all right, like, what what was it like, though? <laughs> He's like, oh, it was so far. And and then they ended up letting him go. Man's an eye surgeon now. Um, so, all right. So I, I wrote I wrote Kevin Smith about this. Uh, I asked him for Kevin B. Smith. Kevin B. Smith. For those of us just tuning in. I asked him for political attitudes, tests that would also hopefully like maybe say something about our personality. So by the way, we have a, we have, we do a monthly bonus episode on Patreon. So I'm already anticipating this being a multiple part. I'm hoping we get through this test in one episode. If we don't, we'll just turn it into two. And then there's another like authoritarian test, which is similar, but different that I would also like to take for the bonus episode um so with that in mind also a couple things that we should explain um to listeners that are tuning in and wondering uh you know maybe you're answering these questions in your head and wondering what they're saying about you or what even this test is saying about ramin and i and the problem with this test um and many of these types of surveys is they actually don't say that much about an individual. Where they are pretty successful is with huge groups of people. 
Hmm. because they're they're just not accurate enough for there there's a lot of factors and there's a lot of it depends on how you take a we should push ourselves to try to be as honest as we possibly can because it's also you know you want to sound a certain way when you're talking about these things publicly and everything else even people taking these tests they want to think of themselves as someone different than they they actually are and and they're kind of leading questions sometimes and you kind of know what the questions are up to and that sort of thing so it's really imperfect on an individual level but you could give this test to say all of the comedy community and really have a nice idea of where all of the comedy community falls as a whole or you authoritarian could have like all of the something. clicks yeah you could have like the rogan crew and then like the meltdown indie crew and then like the blue collar comedy guys you could if you if you t- took a big enough group and gave them also, all this we test, need a, it's pretty nice we need a new word for meltdown alt because meltdown yeah, shut no its doors in 2018 ex- it couldn't yeah, even make yeah. it to covid yeah it yeah. died before covid and they still owed me 800 bucks i still remember you assholes <laughs> That's okay. I won. Uh, My business still exists. They don't have yeah. a business anymore. Just kidding. <laughs> you guys are all right. I appreciate you letting me in the store, but you still should have paid me and not taken all my books when you went out of business. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I think I'm hurt nice by it because at the, at the time, that 800 really mattered to me. Right, right, Like that right. really made a difference that month. But well, now I yeah. guess it's okay. Everyone wants to get paid for the things, what they're owed. Um. So, uh, but anyway, the, the point is these tests, these, these tests do say are fairly accurate in a large sample size are pretty inaccurate in an individual size. So, um, don't, uh, listeners, if, if you're like, oh my, I guess, I guess I'm a dictator <laughs> after hearing this, like maybe, maybe you're not. You know? Actually, it's, it's okay. Like, I'll be your friend if you're a dictator because yeah. I just I appreciate the people that are going to a- answer the thing honestly, which is what I'm going to try to do because we all want to be the perfect, uh, you know, whatever thing you think you are. Some people end up being more liberal than they thought they were, more conservative than they thought they were. Um, perhaps that just happens with age too. I don't know. What's What's wonderful about comedy is there is I mean there there's a couple. There's a few things going on with with the spotlight or attention in in terms of comedy in particular. One is that, yeah, we get a soapbox. But the other thing is, is that it, which can bias things in a lot of ways. But but then also there's there's a lot of pressure to be vulnerable in our business. And there's a lot of pressure to be authentic and to like truly try to, you know, expose yourself and and be that can go the other way where people are like, yeah, I say the things that uh, <laughs> that no one wants to say, but everyone's thinking. Like, I actually, I thought that when I was 14 and then my <laughs> ideas evolved and yours have not. Um, but but anyway, there's we, we actually, we're fortunate enough to get to have incentive to be really honest and authentic. A lot of people that are like, maybe in a corporate job, there's a there's more pressure to fit in in the water cooler talk. There's more pressure to like go to the company softball game to be a cheerleader around the office in things that are maybe not true to them, and uh, that's one of the cool things yeah. we get to do. So, We've been unemployable since what, like 2011 oh, or something, yeah. or 2007 yeah, or something. Just do not hire us um, at all. Um, all right, so here we go. I think this is six pages so this is one of six um and this is this one's broken into i think the next one that we're going to do i'm going to enjoy a bit more um because it's broken into eight dimensions Ooh, rank um, these eight colors of humans okay uh white then uh <laughs> asians then um uh, hmm. oh, it's tough i don't know who what else i to mean put is <laughs> negative four for strongly disagreed uh, uh, through zero and up to positive four for strongly agree with the statement. But this one that we're taking is just for it's strongly disagree, disagree, agree, and strongly agree. Okay. So 
Here we go. If economic globalization is inevitable, should it primarily serve humanity rather than the interest of transnational corporations? What's what's transnational? It means going across national. That's a like good what's the like question. isn't that global? Yeah. Um I mean, of course humanity, because corporations don't care about corporations to the logical end would replace humanity with AIs because if the bottom line is the the value that must be conserved at all costs, then they would choose right. the AI over us. So of course I'm gonna say team humanity. Yeah, there's uh strongly I agree. Mean, I mean, it's it's weird. Uh, again, the, this is this is really speaking to your initial statement of like everyone in the world would theoretically, or you know, in an ideal world, strongly agree with the pro humanity, and then the argument is is like, can that practically be impl yeah. implemented? I How? There's a reason yeah. this is question number one, because it's it's taking your temperature of like, OK, corporations or humanity. And you're like, duh, humanity. And then it's like, OK, one layer deeper, this small business or this the group of, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So uh, tra transnational is just extending beyond a given nation. Yeah, not um, trans owned corporations. No, unfortunately. Yeah, I um, want only trans people owned corporations that hate humanity <laughs> and just <laughs> want to do the thing for their corporations. So, I I mean, this is like I'm I'm strongly agree at at first, you know, first glance at this, but then at at the same time it's it's uh I mean, there's arguments made of you know the, the the all of the capitalism arguments that are made of of like people being able to accrue resources can actually you know innovate and do things do things in ways that you know some authoritarian government or something like that isn't able to or communism isn't a, potentially isn't able to accomplish because of the incentives because of the the freedom to take chances and and create and and this is this is the age old how much regulation is appropriate and and do these um it, it, do capital and uh, capitalist incentives really work um or is it just something people are taking advantage of i i tend to think that uh i mean should should it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of i mean like, if it's true yeah. to the phrase serve humanity and not just like, like serve of, humanity if it's actually course. serving it then yeah who doesn't yeah, want to be served because even even if it's even if it's whatever like, like say you're deciding between some extreme version of communism or capitalism, I would still say, well, whichever version is serving humanity best yeah. as a whole. Whatever so, hat you put on it. Yeah. Even if it had a, like, if the swastika on the hat was serving humanity best, then, like, <laughs> I don't care if that logo has yeah. a troubled history we as long as it works. Yeah, probably won't, though. Probably it's, <laughs> it's time it's, for that. It's as unlikely. Well. Um... It, it, but we we might add more. We're only going to accumulate more symbols that are more symbols of like hatred, <laughs> you know. Oh in the yeah. Future of like no shortage of little uh, symbols we can use to yeah, make hating like, things. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right. So next question. I got to make sure. So my test is the first one. Yours is the second one. I'll check both at the same time in the hopes that this is going to give us some sort of calculation. Oh, by the way, so so you gave me a bunch of different things to pick. I picked, if you want to follow along with us, I picked um, political, com um, compass, politicalcompass.org. 
just because it would be something that would be widely available for you guys, the listeners. And also it seemed to have lots of resources for, there's like a reading list depending on where you fall and various orientations and stuff like that. So you can do further things in the future if you find this episode or even just the survey to be of particular interest to you. What if that's how voting worked, where you would take a true like political compass test and then that's what would populate your your election? It should be more like that, because I don't think that I think that there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, I'm a lab I'm this label or I'm this thing. Like it's it's not unusual for people to take a test like this and think that they were conservative or liberal or whatever and find out that they actually skew a little more toward the middle or a little more toward the other side than what they realize, especially in specific domains. Mm. Um, so yeah, that would be, it, it would certainly be nice at least for politicians to represent where, because, because no politician is going to represent down the line where we check a box on every single category of thing. It would be nice to know where every American falls on every one of these different, like instead of well, I'm a Democrat. So uh, this is, this is how I need to feel about abortion, the environment, uh, uh, the economy, you know, and this is just my, my standard set of beliefs that I have to, argue for because that's my party and that's the tribe that I'm in. It would be nice if instead our politicians actually tried to represent the will of the people, which I believe is was sort of the point earlier on, or maybe that was just a nice sounding thing. And it was it is the largest that. font on that document. We yeah. the people and then all the other like scribbling. Yeah, yeah. Want to um, keep slaves for a little bit. <laughs> just, 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 just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Go eventually. <laughs> um, I'd al I'd always support my country, whether it was right or wrong. Just strongly disagree. Strongly disagree. I'm I'm going. <laughs> I know to... my country is wrong, but to, God damn it, it's my country. Well, I mean, certainly you would believe it's right. Like if you knew it was wrong, you would still support it. That's kind of weird. Well, I actually might put a disagree on this instead of strongly disagree, just because there is. So, you know, I'm not a patriotic person. I think flags are stupid. I think borders are stupid and arbitrary. Um, but also one, um, I do live here, so it's a little self-serving. But two, it's it's like, you know, affecting affecting the change that you can't. Uh, it, you know, it thinking thinking globally and acting locally extends to like the size of a nation as well in terms mm -hmm. of our voting and everything else. And like you you might like I I certainly strongly agree with say decisions family or friends or things make sometimes, but I'm still like rooting for them in certain way i'm not i'm not going to be like yeah that was that was totally cool that ramin bombed a bunch of civilians how did i get that <laughs> uh, get to that place but you know <laughs> but i i don't know you know what i'm i'm saying i so, heard a quote i heard a quote that was shared on facebook or something from like a friend's uh sister or something and they really believed it and it really speaks yeah. to the psychology of it but the quote was you know i was always told god country family in that order and mm. it's interesting because you think oh shouldn't it be the opposite shouldn't it be like you know your family and then your country, Bigger and then family, uh, and God, because God's going to be fine. God, like, yeah, I couldn't take down God if I had a billion Voltrons on my team and a yeah. hundred million nukes, like, in a full automatic weapon. God's going to beat me. It's the true infinite power of everything. I mean, that, that might just say more about you and your ability to manage a team of Voltrons than, <laughs> uh, than about God, but... Um, but like to put your country before your family is kind of 
interesting. Yeah. I mean, should depend. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. your family is raging lunatics and your country is the beautiful neutral land of Sweden or wherever, mm. then maybe. Yeah, and I'm like, I mean, I kind of, I wouldn't mind not living in the united states i mean it's a go? good place for touring i really like australia i don't know I, I i like parts of i think i would i think i would just like to travel more um if i just had infinite resources i would just like to yeah i, I would like to spend like three months to a year in like an airbnb or whatever in different places and get to know it well and then move that'd on. that'd be fun maybe the um, mom tour will bring this yeah yeah um so yeah i mean i'm actually my first instinct is with you to strongly disagree and i've always been like like i make jokes about the flag i usually p push people's buttons in terms of any patriotism or like just in-group stuff in general i'm just kind of like a button pusher but I, I, I also within that, I don't trust my, um, judgment of things enough to know, like if the U S does something war wise, you know, like taking people out of Afghanistan or whatever else, I'm just like, I don't know enough to know if that was a good or a bad decision or somewhere in between. And, oh, I get what you're you saying. Know. Like they might make a wrong move in order to make a right move two plays down the line, like in chess where you sacrifice your queen or something. But you know that three moves later, and, and I know people are tired of hearing the 4D, 5D chess yeah. uh, metaphor, but yeah, it could be like, no, I had to sacrifice my queen in order to get the checkmate in four moves there was no other way to do it yeah so maybe yeah i'm just put, i'm gonna put a disagree even though i'm like often find myself embarrassed to be american but <laughs> um i i mean i get the idea like if, if i read this question in terms of if i was in any country like if i moved and lived in ireland would i support it whether there i would still have it be disagree i think no matter where i was or eventually i would lived. support ireland i mean because who doesn't love the irish they're like yeah, the most I mean. loved white uh <laughs> country i think i mean who, who beats yeah. the irish in terms of love of, of i mean whites. maybe sweden That's... switzerland kind of but irish has a different it's you know the 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 gift of gab the the celtic yeah. the drinking the leprechauns the the fuck you the yeah the, the yeah. way they're mean to each other in a nice way i heard that in ireland like you get roasted for your your choice of wearing clothes whereas here it's like oh i love that red hat and that orange jacket and they're like what are you fucking mario you fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've spent i've spent like a, i've spent a total of probably three or four months in ireland and absolutely love it there if you're going i would maybe not block off tons of time for dublin not that dublin isn't nice it is nice it's just that it's not um it's not particularly novel compared to like you might as well go to paris or something like that in terms of big cities but mm. the irish countryside is just and you can have phenomenal. pride you can have pride for it like you can't have white pride but you can have yeah. irish pride and one time i saw uh it was on one of those days where there was a mass shooter and I know me, of course, it's a, a white guy. It's always a white guy. And then um, <laughs> the someone had tweeted like white people are the problem. This must stop. And like five minutes later, since it took place on St. Patrick's Day, they also wrote like right afterwards. So proud of my Irish heritage, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, it was such a yeah. disconnect for me. I'm like, wait, which one is it? Is it the problem or you're proud of it or both or whatever? Yeah, yeah. But I get what yeah, they're trying I to say. We feel different every five minutes. Yeah, yeah. You're you're allowed to you're allowed to like Ireland and Ted Lasso in terms of, <laughs> in terms yeah. of whites. Are you full Irish or mostly? Because I was just thinking about your name. Like Shane kind of sounds Irish, and Moss mm -hmm. is like you know you think of green Moss. Yeah, Shane Moss is Moss. actually German, and oh. I believe it's uh, it's 
often pronounced mouse by Germans. So mm. I don't know what happened along the way there. Um, Zeke and USS. Ein Maus in- <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then I'm, I think I'm like 30% Irish or something like that. I'm, That's good. I'm, I'm mostly German and got some Irish too. Uh, that's the red the beard, red. I guess. Yeah. I was so so in denial of red hair. I, <laughs> like people would be like, "Are you red?" Because my hair color changes, um, like depending on the time of the year and stuff. And I'd have some stubble, and people would be like, "Are you a redhead?" I'd be like, "No, that's crazy." <laughs> <laughs> Stop insulting me. Yeah, gingers were an oppressed class for a while. Um, but yeah, go to Ireland. Go to I've only really been to South Ireland. I haven't been to North for like more than a quick show. Um, but go to like the Ring of Kerry and stuff in the uh, the western part of Ireland. Just rent a car and go. It's crazy driving around there too. The roads are insanely narrow, and it's like it, there's like brick the the the, like farm the farms just instead of having a fence like 30 feet off the road or whatever like as it should be if you ask me uh they they build they just want every foot of that property so they build stone walls like right up to the so there's no shoulder or anything and it's there's like barely enough room for two cars and they drive so fast. It's really intense to drive around no there, which limit. I enjoy. The speed limit is like, like I'm a crazy driver. And there were places where I felt like I was in a video game driving as fast as I could safely drive. <laughs> and there was like someone riding my ass. Damn. Me. And uh, yeah, it's. Get it's, out uh, of the way, you fucking place. fuck. <laughs> It's a pretty good Irish <laughs> accent. Um, all right, here we go. No one chooses their country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. Uh, disagree. Really? Uh, you surprised me on that one. Because I'm being a- proud of it does not mean like that you're dissing the other ones like you can be proud of being a canadian and then still also love india and indian people and you're like yeah you should be proud of being indian you should be proud of being irish and like pride i know is is a sin it's missing the mark and pride can Mm -hmm. turn into this aggro machismo kind of thing but like to be you know accept it and um Mm -hmm. like you were saying you were denying your red hairedness um I, to a certain extent, no, not to a certain extent, I was definitely denying my uh, Canadian-ness, my Middle Eastern-ness in Texas because it's not cool. Not in the early 2000s, in the late 90s. That's not cool. Now the culture has shifted. Now, like, everyone is kind of embracing their their ethnic thing. If you're a little bit not white or a little bit not American, it's like, yeah, I'm clinging to that. That's my... That's my identity. Yeah. And um, so now it's and Canadian is pretty. That's you're in a good spot. Yeah. I feel like it's right in the um, it's right in the middle. Like no one knows this one. It still doesn't have a month yet. <laughs> yeah. There's like, yeah. you know, Black History Month, Stop Asian Violence Month, Mexican Pride <laughs> Month, the gay month. There's still no Middle Eastern thing. It's still like. What yeah. is Afghanistan and the wars or something, right? And Aladdin, right? Guys, you okay? <laughs> okay, cool. We'll check back in on you on three years. Um, I, um, well, that's, I'm going to put myself down for an agree. I mean, it, it is, and I'm almost a strongly agree, only because, I don't know. Because that's like asking pride for pride's sake, which I think that is, I, I, I guess I've always had a beef with like the default. As I get older, the more accepting I am of rooting for the home team. But I guess some of the stuff that comes along with it is what my major problem is. And it's just like, like I hear people say all of the time around here. I hear people seriously be like, 
Or of course it was a Vikings fan. They're the fucking worst. Like <laughs> that's what you think. You think being a Vikings fan makes you a worse human being than being a Packers fan? <laughs> like, yeah. It's like it, like it, it bleeds into your behavior somehow. Like uh, like you're going to be more violent or less responsible or dumber or something like that because they're of the rival sports team. Like that is asinine to me. And and so that's that's where I fall into a strongly agree in the foolishness of it. It reminds of. me of the Stanhope joke. Do you remember that Stanhope joke where uh like how our tribalism will get down to every level of granularity if it's not uh, people from another country, it's people from another city. If it's not people from another city, it's like, where are you from? Across the street? Fuck across the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, <laughs> it, it, speaking of Ireland, I mean, they, yeah, it was, it, it, I think there's the a lot more in involved Ireland, like Catholics, than, yeah. than, uh, than just saying it was a Catholic Protestant thing, but still, it was, um, you know, from an outsider perspective, who was the Arge Barker had a good joke. That Arge was, Barker. Arge Barker. <laughs> he's he's huge in Australia. Yeah. Too easy. <laughs> no worries, Arge Barker. Coming up next to the stage, Arge Barker. I always thought our, a real cracker. <laughs> um, I always thought Arge Barker was fantastic as a comedian. Oh, and yeah. Then, and then I just haven't seen him do stuff. I don't know, like maybe he's happy. I, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like three kids and like but goes fishing and stuff. Crazy maybe. that he like doesn't have a Netflix special or something. It's like he's got I don't a know. crack flick special on on NetHub uh, in Melbourne. He, it's the Melbourne he, only channel with Edge. He had this thing every night about how. Um, but he would he he so Arch Barker has this really really long setups like really dramatic builds and builds a thing for like five minutes without a joke and then the perfect punchline and it's and it's like it's very performative and uh, he has great delivery and everything, but I'll I'll sum things up. Um, he has this joke about how, uh, wanting, um, aliens, uh, to come down. So finally, like, uh, all, all of us, the, um, the Irish, the Middle Eastern, the Americans, the Chinese, like every, everyone can finally unite with the aliens against the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> I love that twist because we were all like in our heads. We're like, oh, band together yeah, yeah. against the common enemy. But yeah. 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 Um, and all right. So the next question is, our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. <laughs> our race has many superior qualities compared with other That's races a pretty i'll do disagree statement. i'll do You're disagree disagree and the all reason right. it's not strongly disagree is that of course like different uh there's different genetics. Like if you have more melanin, you're going to be more protected against sunlight. Oh, like little stuff like that. Like, you yeah, might everything... have talked me into a disagree. I was a first strongly disagree. Like, of course, strongly disagree. And then, but I'm a big fan of evolution and celebrating. I, I, I wish we celebrated diversity more than, uh, I, I mean, not, not that there's, that many differences between um between races anyway but just cul uh, cultures and everything else it would be it would be nice if we it in in the same way that you um like i 
watch Animal Planet and like to think about having the different abilities to fly or whatever else, or you look at social media and see like a quality or a trait a person has, and you're like, ooh, I could, I wish I had like a little bit more of that going on. And, and so, yeah, I guess, I guess I disagree because you can appreciate diversity, but the, the superior qualities thing is what loads the state superior so yeah not different advantages and disadvantages but just yeah. superior qualities is very loaded superior you definitely don't want to wear it on a shirt <laughs> my race has stronger superior. quality has Su superior qualities to Love other all races, races in yeah. especially the superior qualities <laughs> of, of my race. Gosh, now I'm going back to strongly disagree. I don't know. I'll, I'll mean, keep I'll, it at disagree. I don't you sunburn talk to me that easily. It. I could still get it, but like compared yeah. to my more pale friends, I'm like, oh, I'm lucky I don't have pale skin. I'm lucky I'm of the more brown variety, I guess. I always thought that, um, and I, I always thought that if I've asked some um, black people about this, some friends of mine, like comics. And I'm like, do you ever feel like you have a little bit of like a little bit freer or less self-conscious in certain situations because it's not as easy to see a blush because like my face, when I blush, I turn oh. like a sweaty, like beat red that is so and then it's like i'm more embarrassed that i look embarrassed than <laughs> the actual embarrassing thing that i and then never it's like this thought of feedback that. loop that just like it it's the blush i thought you were going to start it, yeah. talking about like quick twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers no. or something and then the, the podium the comes blushing, out and you apologize because i don't uh I'm pretty self-conscious about how I, I'm not sure we've seen it on this show, but when I blush, it's crazy. I've also, I also we gotta found get that Sapolsky on here. That'll, that'll do it. Yeah. They'll get redder <laughs> than that background. Girls still make me blush sometimes. I'm 41 oh, and girls female will still Robert make me blush. Sapolsky. Yeah, I'll make a I deep fake of Roberta female, Sapolsky. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also, like, like, for example, let me put it in something that's uh, just about me and not awkwardly about other races. Um, I find that having this beard to cover my throat so that, like, if I can get, like, a hair nervous or my throat will be a little dry or whatever and I'll swallow. But no one sees oh. that I've done that. So I don't have the feedback loop. So it, ju it just doesn't make me as self-conscious. It doesn't impact me as much and um i feel i feel like blushing's like that no i'd never thought of blushing once in my life other than just a thing that happens in cartoons but yeah mm -hmm. the throat thing and the hiding it that makes total sense yeah so have you ever had your throat start closing up on you all on the stage? time i mean when you first start stand up you can't s stop it like you get up there and there's the bright lights and you're like oh so the other day i was feeding my own ass <laughs> <laughs> It's like in the Always Sunny where he just can't help but gag. Cheese it's, is funny. Cheese is... <laughs> it's crazy. It's still, even with all of the experience that I... Because I... Yeah, I, I was headlining like seven shows a week, which is just... That's such a... That's hours and hours of stage time over years. As like, I did... I had more stage time than I ever wanted or needed really. And, um, and still like two, three times a year, uh, my throat would start closing up in a situation. And then it's just that that's what gets in your head. And then it closes up more and yeah, oh man, it's quick fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting it draws you more in. This is an interesting statement. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. No. Disagree. Disagree? Yeah. I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm surprising myself on this one. I'm going to agree. 
Because it could be battle royale style where it's like the enemy of my enemy is also trying to get me. Like they they might have more than one enemies. It's not a simple like, uh, mm. oh, they're going to take out my enemy and then I'm scot free. It's no, they might still be an even bigger problem than my enemy. So also, it, I mean, a lot of people would probably say, well, I don't have any enemies, <laughs> so I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> Uh, um, that's a t that's a McKenna line where, or not really that, but it was more like, well, my enemies in the collegiate sense. In I other was, words, enemies. I was trying to do a Kaplan, and it was more of a McKenna. Oh my god, I'm so bad at, at impressions. Um, no, Kaplan doesn't have our, enemies. Our friend He's Mike Kaplan is just pure love and light, and um, and uh, and proud of that. So we're not mocking it we're celebrating it yeah but we all want to be more like mike i don't um all three of them by the way Kaplan, and jordan enemy. and jackson without the kids yeah. <laughs> no touching kids no <laughs> cheating on gambling with michael jordan and i don't know i wouldn't change anything about Kaplan, but the michael jordan i think too unhealthily competitive with the gambling sure um but he's mj you know i can't criticize mj yeah. Who am I? That documentary was real good. Last Dance? Oh, yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah, that big um, cigar. Mm. Talking about the D Detroit Dirty Pistons. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, first off, I'm not... I don't shy away from having an enemy. I, mean, I think a lot of people will, like have someone that could be an enemy and be like, wait, I'm not going to have an enemy in life. I'm like, I'll have enemies. <laughs> I have a, <laughs> like, that's part of the experience of life. I'm not going to shy away from having someone I consider an enemy. Do you, do you go down to that sometimes. person level or more of groups? Mm, both. Yeah, both. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Groups and, uh, and, and personal yeah, for sure. So if you could if you could go behind closed doors and no one would ever see you do it and you can have that person mysteriously die under circumstances that are not linked back to you, would you would no, you do it? Cuz I, I can't think I, of anyone I would take out like no, Scott Free. No, no one I would take out. Plus then I wouldn't have enemies anymore. What about and give I them diarrhea like for a having, week? You give them diarrhea oh, for I would a week. Give, I would give some people <laughs> diarrhea. Okay, <laughs> diarrhea for a year. No breaks, oh, wow. not a day off every day. And then they're like, please, God, today I did everything right. Just not today. And then still just just pissing right out of their ass. Full, full speed. Hmm. Full year, maybe Full year of die. Maybe. I mean, I yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't know that I like need my enemies to suffer necessarily. <laughs> I just like. I just have people that I'm like happy to see them not succeed because I think uh, what they're succeeding in is bad. And also so just celebrate, people that like rub me the wrong cause. way. Yeah. There's just I it it yeah, just people bother me sometimes. There there's like and and some people just seem like um very like they need to have status in a situation or like just rub me the wrong way and I was at a thing. You ever get um, you ever get someone come up to you and just like grab your bicep? It's always like someone that works out a lot. They'll come up, be like, "Hey, how you doing?" Like a handshake <laughs> and like grab your bicep, and they're like, "Like, are you feeling my bicep right now? Why are you doing that?" <laughs> like, stop yeah, it. boundaries. <laughs> are you? <laughs> Like, what is this? Is this a friendly greeting? Because get the fuck away from me. <laughs> That's like, I'll establish. There's things like that, like, like where just someone will do something off and I'll be like, I don't think I like this person. I just don't think I like it. <laughs> like, I think that says a lot about somebody. Do you, um, do you know Albert M? He's a comic in Austin. He used to do this. It wasn't a bit on stage. It was one of those bits he'd just do in real life. Like he mm -hmm. had all kinds of funny things he wouldn't do on stage and just in real life. But uh, it might be hard to describe in audio only. But he would do this character, which is basically like, 
touching you way too much. It's like, yo, man, you seen this show? And he's like, he's tapping your arm and then slapping your knee and then like also touching your back a little bit. But just like he's touching you in eight different points before you even know what's going on. And yeah. when he does it, you immediately associate it with like, oh, that is a real type of character that is all about the like yeah, overly yeah. touching when they don't know you well type of thing. Yeah, yeah. There's, there, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I got a lot of enemies, and and <laughs> then and then with within that, I do I do think that like then there's like lesser enemy, so everything's so contextual. So I, so I have every, so I'm like, you know, there's say aspects of a group like say the psychedelic community or something like that. Like, oh, I really like what this person's doing in this regard. And then I hate that they're like in this conspiracy cult. Yeah. And so I, it just depends on what I'm prioritizing at that moment. So, yeah, I'm putting down, I'm putting myself down for an agree there. You have a disagree. Mm -hmm. So neither of us had like a, neither of us have had like very extreme beliefs. Yeah, so I think I'm pretty much a centrist actually, but I can't say that mm -hmm. in public. Even though yeah. this is public as fuck. That, that's us just. I voted for our... Joe Trump and Donald Biden. We we are um, the Mind Under Matter um, team. We are safely perched um, above, above the messiness of political extremism. And we're, we're safely perched high above all that from... Uh, with this perfect view of objectivity. Yeah, the Mount Olympus. We don't Olympus. get bogged down in the craziness <laughs> of what everyone else thinks. We're just, uh, we're this perfect Goldilocks on every uh, <laughs> on every subject. I haven't made this drawing. I do like drawing. that everyone thinks of themselves as a centrist, right? Like yeah. everyone's like, yeah, I'm a moderate. Why can't more people be moderate? <laughs> it's like, okay. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, like, I haven't made it fully yet, or even if I want to finish the drawing, but just this idea of having both sides and the most ridiculous extreme version of each political side, and then two people kind of in the middle, like, embarrassed, and they're like, oh, I'm sorry about the most extreme part of my ideology. And then they're like, no, 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 I'm, I'm sorry about the most extreme part of my <laughs> ideology that's fun like yeah. shaking hands in the middle or something yeah and you can do it the opposite way where it's like they're not shaking hands and it's like your the extreme views of your side are more ridiculous like no mm. the extreme views of your side are more ridiculous which we often just uh, judge the other person by the caricature of what they're in like you know the the maga hat on one side the blue woke blue haired woke person that's just it, foaming at the mouth always like you can't stop them from foaming at the mouth like, <laughs> i uh, tolerant about everything i'm uh well i'm excited to see this sounds like your first mural oh maybe this is this is like on the side of a fire station or something yeah i'm sure I, they'd I, love I that picture it. <laughs> and i don't know if i'll finish it it's more of a thing i just say because i don't know it just I don't want to touch the politics that much and communicate that like I stand outside of all of it. Mm. You guys are squabbling. I stand outside of everything. Yeah, I don't even get though I do think in. that. I do think that in my head, but that's just my. I think everyone does. Uh, yeah. Military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. Sure. Yeah. Right in the middle. Agree or disagree? Yeah. I might've been watching too much Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica <laughs> and Star Wars recently, but it seems like the character does go against like, but this is against protocol. And then it's like, where did they take the shuttle? It just left the dock, sir. Stop it before it hits warp drive. It's already left our sensor, sir. And then it goes off and does the mission on its own. And uh, it's like, you disobey the day. Yeah, something like that. Because you don't know, maybe international law becomes corrupt, and then the only thing that can save it is good old Uncle Sam going mm. in there with his hot dogs and hamburgers and <laughs> dropping bombs on 
the the people <laughs> below a Fenty number of two hundred or whatever Throwing the Fenty paper scale is. Towel rolls. I don't know what Fenty scale is. Is it are you blacker if you have a higher number or is it a lower number? Write in the no comments. Idea. What is it? I know it's easy to look up. But you know what Fenty is? No. Nope. Fenty is uh what's her name? Rihanna. Not Rihanna, our beloved banana, but the second best person with that type of name. Uh the music artist, business mogul. Um she made uh a, a way it's of a measuring shade make finder. a what it's a shade finder yeah it's a shade finder because i think makeup before was like they had like lots of shades of white makeup and then black people got like one color or something and then so they made a, a spectrum so you know what number you are mm. as your skin tone and then so there's a number with each one and it's called a fenty scale because her last name is fenty so mm. i thought that was interesting but i forget which way goes where like i don't know I, I i'm guessing the lower numbers are more pale and then the higher numbers are darker but uh, yeah i'm yeah. looking at the the fenty scale now it's uh the higher numbers are darker okay yeah, yeah it's i think i'm right one i'm in the 100 to 500 i'm probably more i'm not even right in the middle i bet i'm like middle to left yeah, you're I bet you're like a it looks like you're like a 385ish or something like that. And then I think that I'm around like oh man, I'm kind of pasty. I think I'm like around like a 145 or so. I'm trying to Yeah, up you're my the number. enemy. Everybody below yeah. 300's got to go. Sorry, I don't make the rules, but what did you say my number was? Yeah. 345. Everyone I beneath 345 got to go. Gotta go. Yeah, I can't. I don't. It would be. Uh, we'll have to find out our Fenty number someday. Yeah, because I don't know. It, My, it changes depending on how much sun I have and right. the camera makes it look different. All right. So you're agree because you watch Star Wars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to disagree uh, because. I don't know. I think that I I think that international laws just feel a little better to me. I I feel like they're I th peer I feel review. Like they yeah, there's more peer review. I feel like they um take into account far more cultural differences, etc. I'm sure there's been uh, endless problems with international law in the past, but I don't know what the, um, I don't know what the solution is necessarily. Um, that's why I'm right in the middle though. That's why hmm. I didn't say, um, or wait, it's only four, right? So I have to say, yeah. agree. oh shit. Okay. Yeah, I'll see say this agree other, just to be fun. This other scale. That's what I like about this other scale. When we do the bonus episode, well, the bonus episode might be part two of this, but otherwise, um, what I like is there's a zero, there's a neutral. I would like to be able to have the option to pick neutral. I think that's a flaw yeah. within this. It's a flaw, but it's do. also a feature. Kind of like we we discussed the Tim Ferriss thing where. Um, ask people to rate your ability on a scale of one to 10 and they're not allowed to pick seven because mm. seven is such a safe high number. And if they're, they're not allowed to pick mm. seven, you have to like choose between an eight and a six. And that's like mm. so much different. I see a, a lot of these scales, none of the ones that we've taken, I don't think, but a lot of them have a seven point scale, which I like because that has a neutral. Yeah. Has a, has a four. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I sort of, I still want a neutral in here, um, even with the Tim Ferriss example. There is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. Worrying fusion of information and entertainment? Yeah. Five. Yeah. Strongly, strongly agree. You strongly agree? That there's a worrying fusion of entertainment and information? Mm -hmm. um, in the way that the news has become about clicks rather than news? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. It, this is a good topic because I, 
I know that everyone just got done watching The Social Dilemma and we had like elections kind of um, influenced by international powers or not even powers, just individuals buying Facebook ads and things like that. And, uh, and there, and we're dealing with a lot of figuring out the consequences of how these new technologies are influencing our children and et cetera. But it feels like growing pains a little bit to me. I mean, yeah, maybe worrying I, is the key word there. Like, because I'm not really worried. It's more just an observation and an irritation, but I've kind of grown accustomed to it too. I mean, I like, I like David Attenborough's documentaries more than more accurate like lectures about a particular animal species or whatever sometimes you know sometimes oh. i'm watching those and i'm like eh, that's not perfect that's like that's not i just happen to know a thing about this particular species and i'm like oh they're they should have fact checked that or something it's just off and and uh but it's more people are watching it still they're still learning i mean I'm I'm also biased because I consider myself like a edutainer in a lot of ways. Yeah, you know, I was doing stand up science and trying to blend information and entertainment quite a bit. And I thought it was a fun way to get people, adults out to hear sciencey things. And that that is a I mean, so I guess that's the positive angle of it, because one could also say, uh, you know, is info war info wars is not inf information, it's entertainment. And then right. so if that's fusing everywhere, if everything becomes info wars, right. but right, but, right. but the the good side of the spectrum is things like Attenborough stuff you do where you're actually trying to make re real information entertaining rather than make entertainment selling selling entertainment as information is a problem yeah and then so it's both maybe i'm in the middle then maybe i gotta go in the middle there yeah i'm a i'm just a disagree i mean i think that i think that we're very close to being you and i being in agreement which is basically like a, here again i think if there was a neutral i would be a neutral mm. on this one but if because there's not, I think I'm doing a disagree. So I'm going to keep you as an agree. Yeah, let's keep me on go, that. Oh, wait, you're a strongly agree. No, I'll just go agree because okay. when you made your case for it, I'm like, you're right. I forgot about the other end of the spectrum. I mean, it's just uh, like I watch a lot of lectures and I'll sit in on like various seminars and stuff. And I'm like, man, there's a reason why people don't know this stuff and it's because you got to be super patient yeah and it's, it's, boring as balls and balls yeah, are not can, boring so boring as, <laughs> as something the as opposite cubes. of balls yeah cube <laughs> boring as cubes cubes are boring um okay next page Let's see, where are we at? Ooh, this is going to be a two. See, this is actually what I was thinking for this episode was that maybe this would be a two-parter and then a bonus mm, episode a as well. Because this set. is, this seems meaty, this one. You know, these are all, these are all, like each one of these statements is a nice conversation, is a nice table. To, I, I think anyone listening could get friends together and yeah, pour wine and be and like, do you have... think your race has superior qualities <laughs> to other races at the table? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, all right, next one. Um, people are ultimately divided more by class than by nationality. Oh, well, that's a good one. Yeah. You think by class more than nationality? Yeah, I think, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, so that's a strongly agree? Strongly agree. I'm going to put 
just agree. Like you take a rich person, take a very rich person. It's like, would you rather hang out with a very poor or you take a rich American? Would you rather hang out with a very poor American right now or another uh, rich person from another country? They're probably going to rather hang out with someone of their class. They probably have more in common there. Maybe right. everyone would pick the rich person to hang out with then. Maybe just no one wants to hang out with the lower class people. It's like, yeah, I'll pick rich person at any nationality. I can use their bathroom maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially nationality because because there's something there's something about nationality that I feel like I feel like a lot of humans have got past in in the way that we haven't with like race or sexuality yet where where people will be like, oh, I want to go to other nations or whatever, where it le- uh, they uh, more willing to be accepting of other nations than of like, oh, I'm going to, I, I need more friends that aren't my race or yeah. different sexuality or whatever. I, I don't think, I think it's hopefully going that direction. It's because we maybe not they're less enough, of an but, other. Because before, like, China used to be, like, an alien place because how would you know much about it? Now, because of internet and TV and food and all that stuff. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I love sushi. I love, uh, I know sushi is not Chinese, but, you know, I'm just naming stuff. Like, I love Indian food. I love Chinese food. Uh, You would have to, like, read books of, like, these grand stories of some travel to China or something that is... Uh, you know, like cherry picked information through biased eyes or whatever else. And, and like folklore and uh, all, all these things that would be built up so much. And now it's like, that is crazy. It's just like, yeah, I could go, I could literally go to China tomorrow. Yep. You could, if you have, if you have the money to do so, just like you got $5,000, you can go to China tomorrow. And you don't have to know a word of Chinese and you can kind of figure it out better than you could have before because of, technology yeah and uh i remember chris de stefano hmm. saying his grandfather i must strongly agree now sorry oh, okay. i interrupted no i'm strongly agree too but uh chris de stefano's grandfather refused to eat sushi because it's the food of the enemy <laughs> wow wowzers mm-hmm. that's huh interesting yeah that's <laughs> oh wow it's fun it, I, it's funny because that's no longer a thing that happens nearly as much yeah um controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment oh that's that's got that's a tough one to put in my head i have to actually think of what that means what controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um I don't think unemployment is bad as long as people's needs are met. Like, I don't think that people necessarily need to be employed. Like, mm. if we had AI and robots doing all the the work, then why would people need to be employed? But if you're saying inflation must, we must not inflate the the value of the dollar, even if there's tent cities everywhere and the homeless. Uh, percentage of people who have no homes is going up and up and up then in that case maybe inflation is okay because inflation is just going to happen either way you can't buy a house with a nickel like you could in the 40s you need 25 cents now to buy a house yeah it's this this might be um because of huge blind spots in terms of um global finance that that i have it's not a i i like uh i like behavioral economics but i don't know economics just generally i don't i don't i don't know much about it's a bunch of gobbledygook or how it works or rest in peace norm and uh, (laughs) but um i just don't care as much about inflation as i do i mean unemployment to me kind of in terms of what is practical comes along with i i just don't picture a world where universal basic income 
truly works where like people can literally just never have a job. I think even with universal basic income, people can get away with not having a job for a period of time and have a safety net, but will still need to work some to I'm instead of like people not having jobs, I'm more, I'm hoping that full-time employment gets down to like 20 hours a week mm. for people instead of 40 or something like that. You know, um, I, I disagree on that. I might just be an idealist here, but I think that there's things that you can use your time with that isn't necessarily contributing to GDP. And I think uh, there's endless games to be played. Other that... things than GDP? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please don't make me the enemy of your enemy. <laughs> or I mean the enemy of your enemy of your enemy. Oh, but uh, with... With the inflation, like, isn't inflation just kind of part of the system? Like, I was thinking yeah. of there's inflation with our enjoyment. Like, when I'm two years old, the value of shaking keys and getting a laugh out of it, like, very high. And now in yeah. my 30s, like, shaking keys, the value of that, you're going to have to shake, like, a 100,000 keys to get me to mm -hmm. laugh. If every human in the country shaked their keys right now in front of my face, I think that would make me laugh. But just my dad doing it, probably not that funny. We also, inflation also comes along with efficiency. As we get better at things, as we get more efficient at accruing resources, then that that drives, then that drives down scarcity. And scarcity it influences inflation mm. as well. So if you are better at mining like gold or diamonds or whatever it might be or bitcoin or whatever then it's the value of doing that just is going to be subject to inflation if it if it just becomes so easy that anyone can mine bitcoin really well then there's just not going to be that much value in it that'll be and, fun and that's going to look like inflation um and that's my the most I've talked out of my ass so far. <laughs> yeah, we've already spent too much episode. time on this question. So what am I putting you down for? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, in, inflation over controlling unemployment. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. Disagree. Regular disagree with no animal style. I'm going to put... I'm going to give my uh, give it a strongly disagree on, on that. Um... um It'd be it'd be interesting if if in if people that were independently employed could still have some sort of employment status. You know, there's some sort of like if you're an artist or whatever, or you're a painter or whatever, you're still like, that's what I do. I have, you know, I do have a job where I get I I get some sort of benefits or something like that, or some sort of breaks from, I don't know, maybe there is, I don't know yeah, what I'm talking Yeah. I mean, about. culturally there is depending on your clout, I guess. Cause if you say you're an artist, then people say, yeah, right. And then if you show them like your, your social media following, then it's like, Oh, okay. You are an artist. But then mm -hmm. maybe if you have a social media following and then you live on the street, then they're like, okay, you're not really but then maybe you are. So it's like kind of, there's all these little, little metrics, but in terms of what the government can throw back to you, sometimes there is just not in the States. I know there's artist grants and stuff like that in Canada and the UK funds shows and things like that. Yeah. I want more things like that happening. Me too. Give them to me. I want artists um, supplements. Because corporations can't be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment. They require regulation. Strongly agree. I strongly, strongly, strongly agree. Oh, yeah. With the that worst chimp well. nature of us is going to find a way to dump whatever they can in the ocean. We're all susceptible to it. Of course. I don't even get like, like, I get that people are unsatisfied with politicians or policymakers and whatnot, and they're also corrupt, but it's, but. It's that's that's a flaw within those. That's the system going wrong and not doing what it's intended to do. When when a corporation dumps shit in a river, 
to increase profit, that is that corporation doing exactly what it is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that, that is, that is that corporation being accountable to its stockholders. That's, they're supposed to find ways to earn as much and lower costs as much as possible. That is within their very like, like mission statement. They're legally bound to do it's those the things. scorpion and the turtle story. You heard that one, right? Mm. Where it's like the, the turtle knows how to cross the river, but the scorpion cannot. And then the scorpion is like, hey, can I ride on your back, turtle? And then the turtle says, if you ride on my back, you're going to sting me. And then we'll both we'll both sink and die. And then the scorpion goes, no, 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 I won't do that to you. Come on. And then eventually the tortoise agrees or the turtle or whatever I said it was, same thing. And then it's going halfway through the river. The scorpion stings the turtle and then, uh, you know, it freezes up and they're sinking. It's like, what the fuck? And then the scorpion's like, I'm so- I'm sorry. It's in my nature. Come on. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah. So you can't expect them not to to do the stuff if you don't put the regulation there. They're going to just do it. It's a, it's the thing I don't get about like being a libertarian of of like well I what about me makes anyone think that I'm like love rules and laws and it's but it's but it's uh, going back to this the what if being a libertarian is just about having intense eyes I've noticed that in all of them it's like their eyes are a little more open when they're when they're arguing <laughs> yeah. stuff it's just it's all in that. I mean, do you not believe in like cooperate? The, the only argument I think that you could say is that I'm just being naive, but you, you surely you believe in the ideal of cooperation and effective policies. It's just that your grievance is, is that a policy isn't effective or, or is unnecessary or something like that. But, but how, how do you, it's so strange to me that people are like, less regulation, I want the government out of everything, less government, less regulation, and then like, well, you don't trust big pharma, do you? It's like, <laughs> I don't, that's the capitalism, uh, capitalist system that you say that you want, you, you are both for regulating uh, less regulations for big pharma and then at the same time saying you don't trust anything that they do because they're all corrupt and not regulated enough and bo- it's like yeah, it's inconsistent. you can't have it both ways it's just inconsistent brand logic yeah and i don't like government or pharma or any of those things but it's a messy complicated world and i and i there's a fuckload of people here that all need to like eat and other things it takes it does take mass scales of cooperation and systems that work well for all of that uh to happen so i yeah i strongly agree that they require uh regulation and if we need to regulate the regulators then so be it but it's just it's still regulator regulation all the way up and that's what democracy is meant to do i think it's off, uh, I think it like isn't working very well, but I don't know. What do you think about like voting on your phone and stuff on on, on every issue? Every eventually? issue. Hmm. Seems like it would take up a lot of time. Maybe we yeah. would have an AI that defaults to a vote if you don't feel like tuning in that day. Um, yeah. I think it's better than filling out a stupid mail in thing and then driving to the place and dropping it off in the thing. I think. Th- why can't you do it and confirm it through the blockchain or whatever that it's you? No, I like voting like, on the phone. Why can't people take like a survey like this that then predicts like what they're going to want on a certain thing rather than, rather than like, oh, I like the way that guy's jawline <laughs> is, is makes that. him seem like dominant. And so I'm going to just trust all of whatever like weird pep talks they're giving that are uh, void of substance and don't actually mean anything. Yeah. That's what I'm voting for. <laughs> like what? And it's also inconsistent where sometimes you'll have people like, Oh, I like them. They're a working class person. You can get a beer with, but then if it's AOC, it's like, no, nah, she's a bartender. I don't trust her. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I thought you wanted the working class person that, was low. Yeah. Not that I'm an AOC simp or anything, but you know, 
another inconsistent. What's a simp again? I think it's uh, short for simpleton. Another term mm. was, I mean, it's not the porn term. The porn term is referring to the shape of a vagina camel toe because it looks like Homer Simpson's mouth. But uh, in <laughs> on Twitter, it's referred to as a simpleton because it's like any, anything like a famous person or politician does. If you're like just rushing to their defense, people will be like, oh, you're simping for for them. But I, I like that you're hip to things. Oh, I'm hip I to feel everything. like I'm never like hip to the things. I feel like you're pretty on top of the stuff. If I like learn a thing and I don't know what it means, I have to know what it means. And then it okay. goes in the, the database of like, okay, that's what that means. And I, I recognize that that's a ever expanding, ever accelerating world of urban dictionary. But I think it's fun that new language is invented every day. I like it. I, yeah. It, it uh it's a blind spot of yeah i'm a i'm, I'm not simping hip. for urban dictionary i'm a simp. <laughs> or a stan um, i think a stan and a simp are the same thing a stan and simp like a stan but i don't know what's a stan a stan is I'm learning so much i mean let's urban dictionary that really quick i've already got fenty and what was the other thing that we said it was like uh Oh, transnational now, now simp. And a stan is a crazed and or obsessed fan. The term comes from the song "Stan" by Eminem. Oh, interesting. I didn't know it came from Eminem. And then uh, simp comes from a the solid term. Song. Yeah, simp comes from. Uh, oh, it's a male female one too. When um. When someone who does way too much for a person they like. Um, hmm. hmm. Okay. Interesting. Overly um, submissive to a female and gains nothing from it. Interesting. I didn't know it was what? a male-female one. Female I think specifically? Okay. I think it's changed. I think it's grown to be used across the board, but that's just what the Urban Dictionary says. But Stan and Simp are kind of... Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I like to simp um, for stuff. Yeah, especially for ladies. If I'm going to simp around, for sure I'm going to simp for a lady. <laughs> why, why would I, I? How is that an insult? Like, yeah, I really, I support women because I think they're neat. It's kind of like when someone calls you a snowflake. It's like, oh, you're saying I'm unique in every <laughs> yeah. perfectly unique individual. Um. From each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. Um, like to each to their I mean, ability to each to their I need. I don't even know exactly what that means. Is that like the pure egalitarian communist motto or something? Yeah, that was that was that was Marx, right? Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, a slogan. Well, it was popularized by Marx. I'm I'm more um, about baseline. Everyone should have their baseline met, and then from there you can be competitive and make millions or billions or trillions of dollars as long as everyone else gets their seventy k or whatever mm -hmm. a year. But the the whole like you know a doctor should make as much as someone that you know clogs toilets for a living, not even unclogs them. Someone that clogs toilets, then that's not good. Um, the principle refers to free access to and distribution of goods, capital, and services. In the Marxist view, such an arrangement will be made possible by the abundance of goods and services that a developed communist system will be capable to produce. The idea is that with the full development of socialism in unfettered pr um, productive forces, there will be enough to satisfy everyone's needs. I mean, it sounds good. Yeah, in and theory. It's like not too far off from what you were saying. I mean,. I mean the the thing the thing that I I guess I would like to convey to the average person that is like very scared of the communism or or whatnot is that is that you you might think that you can say 
oh, fuck off. If you don't want to work, like, I don't want to support you, like, fuck off and die or whatever. But it's like, it's so much more comp. That's also not practical. Like, not having safety nets, like, like poor, you know, people live in gated communities because of poor people. You don't need, you don't need home security systems and gates around your wealthy community without desperation. You, you don't, it, the uh, poverty and food insecurity deeply impacts our economy because people don't have kids don't have the energy to learn as well in school. That's why we have school lunches and things. People don't have uh, it, it, people don't have the time or resources to care for their children and families as much or to seek out higher education or to look for a better job or whatever like like this is all that that becomes a lot more ex, it costs it costs like seventy five thousand dollars a year to put someone in prison so you could be like oh yeah fuck them throw them in prison throw well you're still paying yeah one way or another you're paying and that's that's you could easily pay you could you like four people could sustain just like living in an apartment doing nothing at all for one person in prison and those people would be less likely to like go commit crimes and go to prison and everything else so yeah. it's so it's i mean i get the idea that like hey we need these incentives so that we all work or everyone's just going to be a lazy bum or whatever but it's that's also uh that's also idealist in not practical it, exactly. it also doesn't match reality i think i'm an agree maybe i'm not a strongly agree but i'm an agree me too i'm gonna put down an agree look at um, us people Karl their, Marx over here i mean I, the the other thing with that is there's this idea that having people's needs met means that people aren't going to have incentive to do anything else, which is asinine. I mean, that's, that's just like, that's a misunderstanding of evolutionary biology or just how, how the world works in any way. It's mo people don't just spend money on surviving. People spend money on video games and going out and dating and going on vacation. And those are all, Things that food stamps don't buy, Th things that things that providing for a uh, roof over someone's head and uh, it, it, uh, subsidized living expenses don't pay for all. There's still plenty of incentive. If you give someone all of those things, there's still so much incentive for that person to go out and earn because they want to have a more impressive car or whatever else or or have money for for travel. So it doesn't even providing getting some people's base needs met doesn't somehow decrease all of the motivation. All it does is it means they have enough of a base level to have enough energy and hopefully mental health to do better and become more productive in life in in my view of things me too anyway um all right so the freer the market the freer the people no um disagree or strongly disagree seems like strongly disagree because i mean take it to its uh the ultimate end of that polarity like a free, free, free market where I can say like, this will cure AIDS. And it literally is AIDS because it's a free market. Like I can sell you whatever I want. Like that doesn't yeah. seem like you, you, you can't have a pure, pure free market because you could lie so easily. So un unless that's not a free market, if I'm misunderstanding the term. So um, maybe just to disagree, because I, I do believe that you can't have a super, super regulated market where you can't sell anything unless you have 10,000 permits, but um, you do need mm -hmm. some regulation. Yeah, there's, I'm, I think I'm a regular agree on this one, but there's, a, a, again, there's a, uh, I think that, and I'm no expert on, on this uh, again, I'm no, I'm no expert on economics. But I haven't read a sentence Adam Smith has wrote, so I don't know. It, to me, it feels like the the what 
capitalism did right was less about creating this incentive of like, oh, one day I could have a mansion. And it's mu it's much less that that drives people because there's there's at least as many people that that demotivates and uh, and creates like self-esteem issues and lack of worth and makes people give up. And, you know, when when they realize they're never going to have the yacht that the television told them to have and capitalism, the what what was really effective about capitalism was was the decentralizing of instead of in, the reason why there's bread lines is because. The government is deciding how much bread this particular town in this region will need that week or whatever. And it was just incredibly confusing to have that centralized system, especially mm. before computers, to figure out how that bread should be distributed and when and the calculating like by hand on a spreadsheet how many... Ugh. Uh, how many loaves that like population was going to need and the uh, the capitalism was able to decentralize things so that a given bakery in a given town would be able to calculate uh, if i make about this much this is about how many people come in in a given day yeah. it was more about that than like and why would you be a baker if you don't that that was like that was less about you know uh, uh, inspiring people with great dreams of being a baker and getting rich off their baked goods and more about just the decentralization of information, which is, which is a possible exciting thing about Bitcoin uh, or, or crypto as well um, from my understanding, but that's uh, all, already that's, that's feeling like that's getting centralized and gobbled up. No, in, it was the hurry, chosen one. <laughs> He was know. supposed I, to bring balance to the currency, not join them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know, but uh, I, I could be. Well, everyone at the start of the year was like, "Wow, look at all these corporations are getting in, and, and then that's going to make it go up." And now they're like, "Oh, the corporations have <laughs> taken over." <laughs> yeah, PayPal is like offering you ten bucks to buy Bitcoin. I'm like, "Oh, that's not good." The, the yeah. easier it is to get into something, the less valuable it is. Like, think of websites. It used to cost $200,000 to make a simple website in the late 90s. And now yeah. websites are basically free if you want one or 10 bucks because uh, right. it's just easy to get into. And same with crypto. Before, you had to know how to set up a wallet, know your, your wallet address and how to purchase it and... It wasn't that easy to wire money from banks to get it. You just had to get like an invite and stuff. But now it's so easy to buy it. So, right, yeah, yeah. I and that's. I feel like we should do maybe one more just because. Um, man, did I just talk out of my ass and all? I, I feel <laughs> like. No, I thought you had good points, but then again, oh, I'm thanks. the judge of those. So who knows? Maybe I'm not um, a good judge of good points. Well. What's been cool on YouTube is I throw a lot of things out there and then people are like, actually, it's the pancreas that delivers insulin to the cells. I'm like, and the they're pancreas! nice. Yes! They're nice about and it, too. And that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I feel like on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, like it's the same correction, but with like a little bit of judgmental vibe to it. Like lots yeah. more of like they're not starting with the correction. They start by saying, I was disgusted. I was. Yeah, I'm hoping because I uh, there there's so there's so many advantages to listening to a, a podcast on a podcast app and mm -hmm. audio only. You're at work, you're driving, whatever else. But uh, for for people that aren't watching on YouTube, you know, like just passively watching where you're while you're doing dishes or whatever else, maybe consider logging in when you have comments and and just go to the comment section of a given episode's YouTube page just because we're just starting we're still in the ground floor but we're starting to get some pretty cool conversations um and comments and stuff coming in on YouTube and it's it's uh it's really it's really reassuring to have to see like oh we have intelligent people that listen to the show that feels good so yeah do that 
Um, yeah, everyone wants like the perfect audience, right? Like it's this weird yeah. balance of like, I don't want these idiots. And I also don't want these pretentious people on the other side. Like I want the perfect yeah. balance of pretentious idiot. Yeah. And with that, uh, you know, we're like a third of the way through this test. Should we just end it? That's what I'm thinking. I think this will be a two part oh, episode. But what's the last question with though? A bonus. You want to do one more? Let's do speed chess on the last question. Um. Okay. Like we have to say uh, what I it mean, is. We don't. We don't have a. I mean, we can keep going. No, you, you got to get to the pickle bar tournament. And you should stretch. No, and I stuff. don't. I'm. I'm not. Nah. I'm. I'm not. I. I have plenty of time. It's just that we're only a third of the way through this. Um, okay, one more question, then we'll cut it off. Because, all right, it's uh, one or two. We'll see. It's a it's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is is now a bottled branded consumer product. Agree. Okay. Hmm. Uh, but I'm I don't know I'm not a I'm not that much of an agree think about that one because at as long as you can get the other water I think it's fine that you can s sell antioxidant smart water with electrolyte charged tachyon fluid or whatever but hmm. but I don't think it's I like mean, sad I mean sometimes it's fun to go to the gas station and get a smart water get a Dasani on your road trip. Mm -hmm. And they have different textures to it. Not textures. What am I talking about? More just you can tell. Yeah. 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 I, I'm i like, Topo my Chico. instinct is to say disagree. Yeah. And I'm I'll actually switch. kind of surprised to, are you, are you a disagree? I think I was primed with the sad. It started by saying it's a sad reflection. And I was like, it is <laughs> You're a like, sad reflection. I'm sad. It's a sad There's reflection a sad that we're letting like women that. vote. I'm like, it is sad. They shouldn't it's be allowed to vote. It's a sad reflection. Fill in the blank. Yeah. Life is a sad reflection. <laughs> no, I'm disagree, I'm disagree, but not strongly disagree. I think bottled water is not. fine. I think this would this would be another one where I would I would click neutral if it was an option. Yeah, I don't I own like. bottled water in my home, but yeah. I buy them sometimes. I freeze them. I throw them at homeless people. Just kidding. I give them to homeless people if it's convenient. I mean, there's there's also so I mean the the statement is really I'll read it again. It's a sad reflection on our society that something as ba basic as drinking water is now a, a bottled branded consumer product. So this is more about does everything need to be a brand? Does everything need to be a consumer product? And like maybe in 2021, <laughs> I'm afraid so. Uh, yeah, I mean, first of all. There, there's uh, going back to the social media discussion of of some of the, you know, what I would consider to be grown growing pains, which is there are there's brands out there like you know doing everything that they can to get consumers hooked on garbage they don't need, of course, and also there are cool ass products. That if it weren't for awesome branding, you would have never found out about. There's there's probably amazing products that just never figured out their marketing and and stuff. You know that yeah. that would that would have changed your life. Um, and there's you know there's aspects of like when when you buy something and Amazon or whatever or Facebook or whatever else is tracking your purchase that you know that's uh, here on this show we have no we don't uh, for this very reason mostly because of integrity but also our business model that we just uh, i personally believe patreon it will prove to be a superior business model we'll maybe change our mind eventually but that's the way it feels to me is that we have like here's a bonus product that you can buy directly from us rather than underwear that we actually don't care about or whatever but um, all that being said there, it is kind of nice to have AI that knows what products are a good fit for me. Sometimes, sometimes you do find things are like, actually internet, 
I do need that thing. And this is sometimes. the perfect time. And it might be the case that it will skew better because of the internet is is decentralized in a lot of ways. I mean, there's Amazon, which is the opposite. But, you know, there's that commands a lot of centralized power. But at the same time, there is like there there is a lot of. Uh, like true democracy going on 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 the internet where you are getting catered to specifically and you and it is it is like it's not like one president of internet making decisions about what goes out there it's it's the the trends that people are into and what people are clicking on and everything else it did kill the gatekeeper and now we're kind of dealing with the wild west of uh yeah. of just everyone having a voice and what it what it means like what level of freedom is that like you know the old philosophical question of like well should we allow every type of speech even if it's hate speech what if it's not hate speech but if it's like a joke what if it like what spectrum is allowed and what spectrum isn't allowed how do you get mm-hmm. authoritarian when when does it stop etc yeah um Hmm. So right now I'm putting that in the growing pains category. Also, like people get hip to the tricks too. people get hip to like, oh, we, well, no one falls for that thing anymore. And then it just kind of that shady aspect of marketing just dies off over time as we get more informed culturally as we we become more informed consumers this is why teenagers are targeted <laughs> you know <laughs> they're they're naive they're new to having money they have like poor impulse control and that's uh, that's that's if anything if there's anything like screwing up the the democracy or decentralizing of of tv or the internet it's that is fucking teenagers yeah it's, it, it's, it is it's funny not... that it controls maybe it's always been this way i don't think so but it controls the culture like when you think of what the the number one music is it's not going to yeah. be what some 40 year old dude likes it's going to be that what really knows music yeah. by the way <laughs> no, no no it's going to be what the teenagers are into in that moment yeah yeah that dominates yeah. the culture well but we had our moment too we got to be teenagers yeah, um, and uh, we had better taste in things back then. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> we did. Yeah. I'll just pull up a random TikTok, and then I'll pull up a random nothing that we had. Like, like pull up a TikTok today versus uh, us running shopping carts into each other. Shopping carts wins. <laughs> uh, well, this is... Uh, so... I'm I'm very much enjoying this. I think this is entertaining. So I think breaking this into three parts is uh, is appropriate. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Can, we, like, have we done that? It before? doesn't need to be. Th- it doesn't need to be three episodes in a row either. But it could be two public episodes in a row, and then the bonus monthly episode. Yeah. So instead of putting it out on the first, the bonus monthly episode on the first, we'll just delay it a week so that you can hear the two episodes and we'll make sure like obviously if you never heard us fill out the rest of this survey you'd still get like much the same value out of having heard this but if you listen to the whole thing you'll get some bonus value yeah and hopefully we've got some surprises because uh i don't know if this is enough data to but to predict what we would answer on other questions but it feels yeah, like we this... have a, a pretty delicate balance of like help humanity, but hold on, wait one second. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't don't follow your heart entirely. Let's let our brain like keep the heart on a leash yeah. a little bit. Yeah, but not for too sure. tight of a leash. Like, how long of a leash should your brain have on your heart? Is the question. Yeah. Hmm. Six yeah. feet. Yeah, six feet maybe is good. Um, all right, well, listeners, I want to uh, one. If also, if you're new, we have we have every single week we have a bonus um, Patreon episode called Mind Under Art, where you, the Patreon member, uh, write your write in with your favorite 
piece of her means. Also, like your social media handles and stuff, we give you a plug. We dedicate a whole episode to you. It's for Patreon only, but we put out highlights and things publicly. So you'll you'll get your own. Uh, we have a lot of awesome artists and stuff that are Patreon members that we've plugged on the show a bunch. And then we have a bonus full monthly episode that's always something like this. It's always a little bit different each month where it'll be like a part two or part three of, of another episode. Or sometimes I think the last one we just chatted about movies because that was like kind of an atypical conversation for us to have. Or one episode we talk way too much shit about other comedians or something. <laughs> I don't even so remember we, who, but it's going like, to bite us in put the ass later. Patreon. Um, and, and, and that's our, our show is 100 percent supported by patreon and we still can't afford water for the the crew we have a full-time editor just uh, serve he would do such a better job i feel like if he didn't have to drink his own pee <laughs> um, and he's already doing a really good job so just imagine yeah. what a urineless version of him would do <laughs> yeah and uh an assistant helping with social media and everything else too so um so help out matt and rihanna by supporting on patreon and tons of free content on there and uh in terms of marketing thing that one feels like it it just it just i love this subscription system because one we get to express ourselves in other ways and get funded to do so and two you're it's like when you're a comic there's clubs that that um you know have a they paper the room. They give out a bunch of free tickets to the show. And then they sell you like crazy overpriced drinks. And that's how they get you. And that's what most podcast marketing is like. It's like, this is free. And then, but you need to trick enough people into buying a supplement that actually they don't need and probably isn't good for them. <laughs> so in that, oh, look, I'm bleeding. <laughs> how did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I just scratched a thing on my skin. Look, guys, I'm falling apart. I'm bleeding everywhere. I was like, why is there, what is this liquid on my... That's bigger than any my... Yosh scratch I've gotten, and that's saying a lot, because if you're a first-time listener, Yosh is one of the members of the podcast. He's not here right now. But... Yosh is a magical cat. But he's right. Um, um, he's... Like I, right I, I have nothing around. I can't even afford band-aids um, without your Patreon support. So anyway, and then there, there's clubs that the clubs that are always the best to perform at and the best to be at are the ones that actually just make money on the ticket sales. And that to me is like what Patreon is like. You're actually paying for a product. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. I go on about this each week. But I truly believe in it, in that money goes right to us, right to the team to pr produce more content. And there's a bunch of other awesome stuff there. So thank you, Voids Visionaries. Sweet honey bears, the fanciest of Camante de Buffons, <laughs> where if you go on and you last long enough uh, or, or or support long enough, last long enough, last long like enough. survive long enough. <laughs> I thought but it was a you, sexual thing. If you support, uh, if you support for long enough as a Camante de Buffon, um, you'll get a you'll get a mum diploma um, eventually made with your uh, name with Camante de Buffon ended uh, uh, added to the end of it because you're the fanciest person ever. And now I'm distracted by this blood. Ramin, yeah, you should anything take care else of that. You say? No, you should take care of that. I'm I'm worried that you might lose a hand and. I mean, if you if, if you fucked up that hand really bad and then fucked up the other one, you would have the whole set because you have done the hands and the feet. And well, I've already I've I've broken both arms in my life and I've broken both feet in my life. And I knew I, I thought I broke my back one time <laughs> as well. So I've, I've done a nice, well-rounded um, breaking. But yeah, I'm going to go clean uh, the this blood off my arm. That's what I'm doing today. Yeah. Uh, First blood episode. Pretty fun. <laughs> um, so with that, until next time. Keep on salivating, honeys. Ding. Ding.
Hey guys, quick outro. Get a little more of us. Uh, I wanted to, this is where I start already being like, I screwed up what I'm saying and I want to re-record, but Ramin doesn't let me do that. He says, keep, nope, <laughs> keep, not allowed. keep going. So anyway, we decided to Cakes make an outro in. because our ideas about the content that we want to re release in terms of the survey have evolved since the time that we finished recording the first one. So we've had so much fun doing this survey that we decided to, I think we're going to break it up into four, but we're going to make it every other week. So it's not just like four in a row. We'll probably make the fourth of four a bonus episode. So actually it's only three out publicly. Um, I don't know if any of this is confusing or necessary to you, but just know that there's more of this info to come. The main thing that I wanted to inform you about is that the bonus episode this week or this this for the month of October is coming out on October 1st, as uh, it always comes out on the first of the month, um, bearing something um, happening. And what we decided to do was something called the right wing uh, authoritarian scale. And we thought maybe it was going to be similar questions. It was, I, I got it from the same resource, from the same political scientist. We thought it was going to be the same, uh, similar questions as the political compass test where we're like hemming and hawing on like where, where what side of the, a neutral fence we're on and and selecting and mostly moderate and uh turns out uh, the right wing authoritarian scale is absolutely insane and <laughs> riddled with completely crazy questions and uh really entertaining <laughs> reading the questions could get us canceled <laughs> reading just reading the question. An actual scientifically valid survey. Like if you take, if you subscribe to the bonus episode and edit out just me reading any of the things in the surveys, <laughs> I will need to make public apologies and clear up what happened just reading off what it said. And it's horrifying and also funny. And we have a really, really good time. We just got done recording it and we decided to record this to, to prime you to go over there. So um, as a reminder, if you go to patreon.com slash mind under pod, you can check out all of the bonus content, the weekly mind under arts and the latest and greatest bonus mum episode. Hope you get a chance to check it out. Thanks for all your support. Please check it out. Please. 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 Come on, do it. <laughs>